Hey everybody, welcome to System Test 35. So today's test is going to focus on the Simplex 4904 series strobes from back in the late 80s to the early 1990s. And as you can see, we're currently looking at one mounted on that retrofit plate. And since we're already up by the notification appliances, I guess without too much further to do, we're going to get right into uh, taking a look at what I have installed on the system today. So. This is a Simplex 2901-9840 flush mount horn, or semi-flush, depending on how you want to look at it, mounted on a 4904-9105 retrofit strobe plate. On the NAC2 spot, we have a very similar strobe. This is a 4904-9104, and this one is just configured as a single-gang remote strobe. So of the two 4904 series strobes, you can find that the one over on the left on the retrofit plate is going to be considerably brighter than the uh, slightly older 9104 over on the NAC2 spot. The 9105 is a 15 candela strobe, um, at least that's what's printed on the label. I know there's been kind of a discrepancy based on what the model number should be and what the candela rating is, but that one is labeled as a 9105 and it is rated at 15 candela. And then the 9104 is only rated at 4.5 candela. I considered installing simplex T-bar pole stations like a, you know, 4250-20 or 2099 series devices. But since I have done pretty similar simplex systems in past system tests, I decided to go with something a little bit more interesting uh, for the pole stations. First of all, we have a Thorn Autocall 4050-211T-101 pole station, and I decided to go with this one uh, to kind of celebrate the fact that uh, Johnson Controls is bringing back the Autocall brand and that it's going to be pretty closely linked with Simplex's product, so I guess it kind of fits in with what we've got going on here. And for the other pole station, we have another strange rebranded FCI MS2 pull station. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I have quite a few of these uh, oddball rebrands from uh, FCI. And this one I just got recently, and it's by far the uh, the strangest. This is a Landis and Gyre MS2, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that company name uh, perfectly correctly, but um, I really don't understand why this Landis and Gyre company would have needed to put out a uh, rebranded version of this pole station in the first place because based on what I've seen online they manufacture smart meters for like uh, electrical systems to measure how much energy has been used at a, a business or a residence so the fact that they would uh, put out a line of fire alarm pole stations is kind of uh, confusing but um, the other thing about this pole station is it doesn't use the standard PK625 key it actually uses an EST Edwards Cat45 key which I was lucky enough to have on hand even though I don't have any other pull stations um, from EST that use that key. So let's go ahead and move on and get started with the test. So we're going to go ahead and start with the Thorn Auto Call station first and then we'll get back to the MS2 a little while later. So here we go. And we'll go ahead and silence those DMP keypads in the background. Now we're going to go ahead and activate the Landis and Gyre MS2.
Now we're going to go ahead and reset the pull stations, starting with this one, which just uses a uh, Phillips head screw. And now the MS2 with the uh, EST Cat 45 key. You can see on the inside here it still has a uh, fire control instruments label MS2 FCI. The last thing I want to test before I reset the panel is this Simplex, uh, I think it's 2098-9806 uh, key test station. And the reason being is this will probably be one of the last system tests where I have this device installed on the system and it's been here for a while. Because I'm going to be taking it off of here and using it on a system that's going to go with uh, my 4070S and a duct detector that I have for that system. So it'll be kind of in a more appropriate, more uh, realistic uh, use over on that system and then I plan to eventually replace uh, you know like this device spot with the same exact kind of thing but just one that matches my uh, Siemens Cerberus Pyrotronics uh, PE11 as soon as I can find one of those and make the change so here we go although I haven't been able to find uh, one of the Cerberus Pyrotronic ones available for sale yet but We'll do this one for now. So now you see we have uh, alarms on all of the active zones except for the sprinkler riser, but I don't think it'll be necessary to do that one today. And uh, since I already reset the key switch and the pull stations, we're just going to go ahead and reset the panel. And just like the last test, I'm going to reset the DMP system using the key switch on the little enunciator up here. And that's mainly because of the way that the light comes through uh, the window in this room at this time of the year. There's so much glare on the uh, keypad screens that it's basically impossible to read what it says anyways. And uh, so there's not much point to showing those. So we're going to go ahead and turn this to the reset position. You'll see all the indicators go away, turn it back, and it should come back reset. There we go. You'll see that that trouble condition is persisting, and that's because I don't have the uh, auto pulse system on for this test, because uh, I'm using the standby batteries in, a, in another panel that I'm working on right now. So uh, there wasn't much point in me starting it up because I wouldn't have been able to clear the uh, trouble on the DMP anyways without the batteries. So that's just the, uh, the current status of that and that's why you still see that indicator. So that's all the system test content I had planned for today. And like I said, this may or may not be the last uh, system test where this uh, simplex key switch and indicator appearing in. But it's probably going to be the last test where I've ever messed with them on this system. And um, so I should be getting a Cerberus Pyrotronics test station that I'm going to be putting there. And I forget the model number off the top of my head, but I can check real quick. Um, I think it was something like RB-11. Um, It's supposed to be compatible with the PE11T, 
so that I'll be able to, instead of just having this thing kind of operating blindly, um, because the way it's currently configured, it's just the, the zone stops, uh, or is wired through this switch first before going up to the, det the uh, detector. And then this uh, LED is actually on NAC2, so it doesn't, you know, truly represent that the detector is in alarm or not. It'll, it'll light up on every uh, alarm activation, whether the detector loop is in alarm or not which isn't exactly ideal, but when I put that one on the duct detector for the 4007, like I mentioned, and um, then replace this with a Cerberus Pyrotronics version that's compatible with the PE-11, I'll have it all rewired so that it'll actually um, indicate when the detector is in operation, and then the test switch that's on that one will actually cause an alarm originating from the detector rather than just an alarm on the zone. So I, uh, I pulled up the data sheet and it looks like uh, the device I'm going to be looking for is a RSAW-11 and that should have the same tri-color LED that the detector has. Um, I, I thought when I looked it had a, a test switch on it, but if it doesn't that's not the end of the world. Um, and so it should look pretty cool. I have no idea when it'll get here. This will probably sit as a, a blank junction box for a little while, but we'll see how it goes. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.